Thank you for tuning in to Androna Talks Radio. Gathering as one in our sovereign truth from a galactic perspective. Exploring our world with new ideas, knowledge and a promise of a better future. Galactic discussions for collective minded people. Androna Talks. and thank you for joining us on Andrana Talks Radio. So I'm going to address the big topic that everyone's concerned about is this event tomorrow for the eclipse. And now I don't want to say this is the apocalypse as opposed to the eclipse or that this is um, some other like biblical event. However, there's a lot leading up to what um, biblical prophecies have been talking about for many years. So let's not disregard anything. I always say let's go right toward it rather than avoid it. Let's not ignore some of the things that are happening and what other people are saying because they may have some really interesting valid points. I'm not pushing anything. I have no agenda whatsoever, but rather just a collection of research that I'm going to share with you and let you make your own decisions regarding this. So the first one was um, this individual, he starts talking about- This man bought an old pick. I want you to see what's coming April the 8th. This is- Okay, so we're not allowed to play this, but um, I'm gonna get to a point where maybe we can show a little bit about what they're saying. So there's a crisscross that happens. A lot of people have seen it already. 2017, it went from uh, the lower um eastern part or florida region all the way over to california or actually up to oregon in 2017 it made that juncture and then it goes back over to the right to and on 2024 you will see the intersection created an x in that path um some people claim it goes through nineveh that's the name of many towns or eight towns named Nineveh. Well, technically it doesn't go through all of them, but it's sort of in that path. We'll, we'll just say for the sake of, of the argument. Um, then there is a, a town that's called Jonah. And then there's also, um, it goes through a place called Williamston, Kentucky, that has a reproduction of an ark. And there you see that it ends up in a place called Salem, which is in Oregon. And then another thing that they talk about is um, related to Cetus, which is the constellation or the whale. So in other words, people who don't understand the significance of Jonah as a prophet who was told to go to Nineveh and warn them about that they were in trouble with God and that they needed to repent. And so um, he didn't go. He gets on this boat. The boat has a lot of problems. So he says, it's my fault. I am jumping from the boat, which he does. And a whale swallows him and then brings him to Nineveh, where he fulfills his prophetic duties. So that's how a lot of this starts off. And what's weird is... Of Jonah, Texas. You see, several towns and cities named Jonah. Nineveh, and Nineveh. also get this through rapture. Okay, so then it goes through rapture. So that's where I said, you know, whether it's apocalyptic or rapture, and it just, you know, really is very intriguing, right? 2024 eclipse and the rapture. There is St. Louis, the eclipse approaching next month. There will be an uptick in internet posts regarding it. Allegedly, these two paths will converge over a place called Rapture. And the exact timing of when all this is being discussed. But I want to point out something for those of you that are not familiar with some of some of the Christian teachings or have not read the Bible. 
The word rapture, I don't believe actually exists in the Bible. So this is something that, you know, I knew about this, other people have, but it was, it's such a strong teaching that you actually, you know, get to a point where you would believe if you didn't know any better, you'd believe that that was actually talked about in the Bible. So where did the term the rapture come from? And that comes from the 1830s, believe it or not. It's not that long ago by this uh, gentleman by the name of John Nelson Darby. Now I was looking at this guy. Um, he's um, Anglo-Irish biblical teacher, founder of the exclusive Red Brethren, sounds Calvinist, and also is a father of modern dispensationalism and futurism, which I thought was interesting. Talks about the rapture and presents this whole idea to the public. And so you wonder, well, where did he get that information now? I looked at him and I thought, well, he looks kind of familiar. Where have I seen someone that sort of looked like him before? So I was looking at the history of photography and this is the first man, Robert Cornelius, who was the first man to be photographed. So I want to take you back to Nelson Darby. I'm not saying it's him. But I am saying that there is something similar about him. And if he is also a time traveler, it made me wonder if he didn't have something to do with it. To bring up the whole concept of rapture. For a time traveler, what does rapture mean? It's something to think about. It could be, you know, uh, abduction from an alien craft or some type of future reality, um, a bleed through into another reality. There's a lot of different things to think about, but I thought I'd just present that to you as just another thought. They're saying that this isn't going to happen, but we I found out later that it will. Actually, it started, I believe, yesterday. And um, so CERN is definitely opening up. Um, CERN tests world's most powerful particle accelerator. So we have this going on as well. It wasn't necessary for this to happen, but they obviously planned it and they have a plan regarding what's going on and to take advantage of this eclipse. I'm sure it was planned for a long time. And that's why there's so much hype everyone's waiting and expecting something to happen and they're not putting people in the know of what they're doing. So after being a uh, dormant for a while, they are reinitiating this and have already started this weekend. It's incredible to believe, but even researchers are shocked that another prophecy is starting. So they're bringing up the prophecies. Um, things that they believe will come true. And I just want to, I'm going to have all of these little excerpts and, and links and that you can kind of browse through yourself and see what they have to say. But um, this has to do with things growing in the desert. And that was supposed to be part of a prophecy of end times. So they were kind of mocking people, especially those in conspiracy theories and that everyone's lost their mind. And well, have we really, if we're questioning what's actually happening? Here again, it's really easy to, you know, complain about the people in the community that are actually bringing these, this type of information forward and helping the rest of the people understand and actually reveal what's happening with the agendas of the elite and those who have been um, silently planning things around us. So here is, um, you know, so, some of the, I, I believe this is the Hebrew reference to what's going on. So the post, there was 3,000 tweets, illustrates how the trajectory of most recent solar eclipse viewable in the United States, as well as the trajectory of upcoming eclipse 
form an Aleph and Tav, which as anyone who is forced to go to a Hebrew school, um, instead of staying home and using cheat codes and so forth, are the first and last letters of the Hebrew language signaling the beginning and end of times. So all different cultures are starting to look at this and trying to figure out what what actually is happening and why are we making a big deal over an eclipse that we've had before. Yeah, they talk about NASA and uh, Wallops Island where they were uh, planning on doing an atmospheric, atmospheric perturbations around the eclipse path, but also a reference to the snake goddess of darkness, supposedly the nemesis of the sun god Ra, ostensibly the title of the project, which is intended to measure changes in electric and man magnetic fields, is a clever reference to ancient mythology. They talk about um, the post about Apap, who is the snake god. And, uh, you know, incorporating all of these ancient gods, goddesses, and, you know, historical lore into some of these NASA projects during which Masonic, Satan, Satanic, Esoteric, Gnostic, Brotherhood of the Snake, and, and other occult groups will be performing. I did discuss some of this uh, information on Gale of Gaia, which I will share that link below. But you will see that, you know, this, this information has started to come out, and I began to look at it. On Monday, you'll be standing right in front of the, right on time, and wearing the stupid-looking glasses. Um... And they're talking about all these different things that possibly could be happening, right? It's not going to lead to the apocalypse and you not going to witness any world leaders participating in satanic rituals and you won't fall into a coma, wake up in a hospital six months later, find the world has been taken over by flesh-eating zombies. Meanwhile, I'm hearing the song from Cranberries, Zombies. And uh, also the song Black Hole Sun came up which is another, and it's it's interesting how this music kind of brings things back to us, and and other people are playing this music, seeing the connection. Can something like that happen? Well, of course, but, you know, I hear again that we're mocked about it, but yet I don't want to promote fear, but I don't want to promote ignorance either. So um, Alex Jones is brought up some really good things and we're all the wiser because of it in this video by Soundgarden uh, it's called Black Hole Sun you will see that, that it looks like something happens with the sun where I'm just going to turn it on Obviously, we can't play it, but I can at least show you some pictures where there's like this strange expressions where people start turning into like this distorted looking faces from the effects of, you know, it looks like a picnic scenario, but everything's very, very twisted and it's related to this black hole sun, which could be an, an eclipse. And so you're just standing there looking at it and saying, well, what, what is this message? This song came out how long ago? And uh, since then, Chris Cornell is no longer with us. Not to mention that people have been having this dysphoria where they're seeing it looks like some form of um, demons. And uh, that, that too is, is an issue. Here is the arc that I talked about. That is in Williamstown, Kentucky. And the solar eclipse will go right through that area. And interesting, the guy's name is Ken Ham. Uh, for those of you that know about Noah, um, Ham was one of his sons. It's incredible to believe, but he... Here is a, a video that might be worth watching from End Times Productions called CERN in the Return of the Nephilim. And they talk about how all the plans that were leading up to this point had already played out. They did some type of event 
and uh, underground and and performances to kind of open up to the public a little bit about what they're planning on doing. And he brings up the whole thing about um, the revelations and discussion about Apollyon, who is supposed to be one of the gods of the sun, which I believe is is the alternative, is not the true Apollo, but another Apollo, and who is connected to the sun. Um, maybe it was Phaeton. Maybe it was... Dionysus or something like that. And then um, Abaddon, who also is mentioned. They're pretty much, the name Apollyon and Abaddon are mentioned hand in hand. So it's leading up to, you know, these, these discussions of kind of, I won't say doom and gloom, but apocalyptic or, you know, warnings. And, you know, there is, you know, a, a, an expression of um, the ancient has hu humanity gone too far. Um, I know that a lot of those that are making these decisions are not the average individual. It's the elite. So they're saying, well, everyone needs to repent. Not everyone was a participant in all of these activities in creating this scenario for anything. Um, many have not had much of a say about it. So that's why I say that, you know, we have levels of divine protection in those that are clearly at fault of bringing in these problems should be acknowledged. We need to, I'm not saying it's about blaming others, but clearly we have not made these decisions. So here's another example is CERN and uh, another experimentation of um, ghost particles. And what is it that they're trying to bring in? That's the whole key. They want dark matter. They want to see what it's like. They want to break, tear open the, um, the fabric of our reality and allow whatever comes in or allows us to implode or collapse or what have you. You know, um, they're making that decision for us. I heard another individual say that was um, trying to remind everyone that there's more than one. It's not just the one in Switzerland. There's a bunch of smaller ones. Okay, then there's also the black sun, of course, the Nazi fixation on the uh, sun wheel. And we know that this is also related to um, the sun cross, the wheel cross. It's a wheel that means it's, there's movement, there's energy. And uh, well, it's, an, it's a very, very ancient image. The ancients recognized that we as humanity, as anything that's living, needs the sun. It's very, very essential. But also there's this element of um, the, the, the complete threat of destruction of the sun and the concern of that destruction of the sun. And uh, the story of Phaeton. So we just saw Helios in that other image. And then we look at Phaeton and the, the situation with Phaeton. And I believe what happens is, is he, uh, the details of Phaeton, according to this version, Phaeton travels far east to meet his father, sometimes in order to get him to assure in his paternity. Here he asks Helios for permission to drive his father's sun chariot for a single day, despite Helios' protests and advice against it. Phaeton doesn't back down from his initial wish, 
Thus, Helios re reluctantly allows him to drive his chariot and placed in charge of the chariot, Phaeton was unable to control the horses. In some versions, the earth first froze when the, the horses climbed too high, but when the chariot then scorched the earth by swinging too near, Zeus decided to prevent the disaster by striking it down with a thunderbolt. Phaeton fell to the earth and was killed in the process. This is, in my opinion, is related to Apollyon. Apollyon tampering um, the, the son of Apollo, the son of Helios, another name, Phaeton, taking on the chariot, misusing the power, misaligning with, with the sun, sending the sun too far away where everything freezes, where we see, we talk about this with the whole thing, the um, information regarding the war of Nim, where certain beings that want to take over the planet want it to be very cold, want an ice age. And if Phaeton brings it too close, then there becomes another problem where you scorch the earth. So this is something that's really important, should not be ignored. And I believe this too is part of what we're experiencing right now. So as they mention that Apollyon is here, Abaddon, you get an impression of a misuse of the chariot, also depicted in CERN, a misuse of technology accessing the sun, trying to utilize the sun as a portal. Here is Helios. He's got four horses. That's like the four horsemen that you hear about in the Bible. Imagine that chariot misused, what happens to the horses. And that is a judgment or is it abuse, neglect, and a severe alteration of what happens to our solar system. And get back to the black sun. What were they looking for? They knew that there was power in the black sun because the ancient Aryans, those from also the um, ancient Indian, understood what some of these, these symbols were. They were the ones they were, and also they were considered ruins because um, also the Nordics, were looking at this information, they understood the sun wheel, the connection to the sun, and the misuse of the sun. But there is also Shani, who is <clears throat> also got, goes by the name of Surya, was born as a sage. And he was supposed to be um, connected, connected to the sun. He is also referred to as, as a black sun. Some of the states have announced a state of emergency. I think they're concerned about people gathering around and viewing the eclipse and what might happen. With some of the natural occurrences, typically in the past, solar eclipses have happened uh, without any major after effect. But there's so much tampering that we're not 100% sure what could happen. So that's why there's a bit of a warning. And I suggest people be very cautious as well. It might bring about some weird things. I'm sure there will be, and we will definitely hear about them. Maybe some noises, maybe some um, strange things. They do tell you to, you know, be careful looking at it, make sure that you're fully protected, that you can uh, expose yourself to blindness. 
There's uh, another one I talked about earlier, how there's more than one CERN. This gentleman brought up the mini CERNs and he brought up Oak Ridge. And for those of you that remember, we did a show about that uh, Bonaventure traveling for humanity. And we will have that for people to view if they want to watch and see some of the things that I found out at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, what I experienced. This is another video that I thought was interesting um, coming from the House of the Muse. Uh, Tulum being suspicious. Looks like they have a conference. It could be CERN that they're replicating. They show a man or actually it's an androgynous looking being that is upside down. As you can see. And it sort of it almost looks like a watch or it looks like as some people pointed out it sort of looks like a spacecraft if you lay it down. Others say that it looks like a portal of some sort. This is near one of the Mayan ruins. And it looks like they're trying to bring in something that is maybe here again. Trying to insert some other uh, experience. Here's the spaceship that some people are referring to. And that it looks similar to, the, especially the way it's broken on the side in the top part. And I believe I, I remember seeing something like that as well. You can see how it's broken there. And that looks like some kind of blood. What are they trying to do? What are they trying to bring in? Some people say this is not a regular solar eclipse. It's a reactionless craft. Brother April 8th isn't going to be any regular solar eclipse. Um, please explain. Well, this is going to be the end of natural light as we've known it. Some people are worried that this is going to be the end of natural light. And uh, they've also, let me see if I can. History. Wildlife will cease to exist. Plants, farming, buddy. The average lifespan of a human will be instantly cut in half during the space race. This gentleman in the video, he talks about how uh, NASA was trying to create a Dyson sphere around our sun and that because of that they will encapsulate it and I'll show you that energy is humanly possible somewhere over and you see images like this the last decade we've not only accomplished that with innovative technological advancements in radiant resistance engineer radiant resistance engineer engineering We've deployed this. And you can see that it's surrounded by some kind of sphere or glass encapsulating the sun. Resistant power condensing breakthrough of a machine known as the Dyson sphere. To the Dyson sphere, everyone's familiar with that. Everyone loves the Dyson's products, you know, especially as vacuum cleaners, hair dryers, and some of these other technologies. And you're finding the Dyson dryers even in like public restrooms all over the place. I've found that seen them in Europe as well as over here. Uh, so uh, it's it's very, very um, interesting technology. And now you're seeing that the, the design, I'm not saying that that's the product line of Dyson, but it's the concept. The Dyson obviously has, it's it's an explanation of, of a type of sphere. Encapsulate the sun. Encapsulating the sun known as the Dyson sphere to encapsulate the sun and harness its energy in the Dyson sphere. It, and harness the energy in the Dyson sphere. We'll do just that on April 8, 2024. So this person claims that that will happen tomorrow. That is more frightening than a lot of things. Uh, science, tampering with nature for whatever um insane reason as some of these scientists literally do not make any sense to any of us. Why would they be doing that? But they have been. So um, 
yeah, in short, that this is a, a theory. Whether it's true or not, we can uh, take a, a little bit more of a look at that. He claims it will be roughly around 11.07 a.m. that they will initiate this new movement with the Dyson Sphere. And you say, well, that's absolutely ridiculous. How could they do something like that? Well, they wouldn't create, there's ways of accessing our reality. This is why they're tampering with the quantum to go in through other ways and other access points to access our planets. And you'll say, well, how in the world do they do that? And how do you know about that? I know that I know for a fact that there is the access on the outside and there's the access on the inside. And there are intricate ways of accessing certain things if you um, have the knowledge. And unfortunately, the wrong people get a hold of that knowledge. And this is what the intention is. Let's take a look at radiant resistance engineering. They're referring to it as an in as an antenna, electrical resistance caused by emissions of radio waves from the antenna. The radio transmitter excites the radio frequency, alternating the current and the antenna and also unconventional ohmic resistance. Let's see if we can get the exact term. Radiant resistance is conventionally defined as a value of electrical resistance that could dissipate the same amount of power as heat as it is dissipated by the radio waves emitted from the antenna. So on some level, they're using this technology, obviously with some other kind of quantum technology and uh, initiating something extremely dangerous. We do know that they've there has been conversations uh, coming from Harvard or MIT. Um, there's something called sun blocking that could reduce global temperatures by reflecting sunlight away from the Earth. One method involves stratospheric aerosol injection, where aircraft would disperse sun blocking particles such as sulfur dioxide into the upper atmosphere. Uh, we refer to that as chemtrails. The world scientists are arguing whether or not to block the sun. So these articles are out there. And there is no hidden agenda here. They're, they're pretty blatant about it, about what they want to do. So you see in this image of the World Economic Forum, <clears throat> it looks like an eclipse. So they're aware and their intention is to alter or do something during this time, which is, is a bigger problem. They do know people's belief systems, people, people believing in the rapture, people believing in Christianity, and even those uh, star seats that would like to exit and they want to, I, I don't know what they could possibly do. Um, also, you know, invert or do something to our reality through portaling into um, something related to this eclipse. Okay, so this video that comes from uh, Sunday Cool Tees, they have some really interesting videos. Uh, Ninjas are butterflies is some of their terms, but um, what they came up with is uh, there's a, there was an event or solar eclipse that happened around 1811, 1812. And then at the same time, there was a comet. And the the uh, simultaneously, then there were earthquakes. Now, we just had a major earthquake in New York City. And I even had some friends that had sent me pictures of how things were opening up a bit around where, you know, they had taken some pictures and so that was really unexplained. And I, you know, also felt like there was uh, some kind of very, very strong winds that I experienced where I live, you know, uh, further away from New York, uh, closer to um, Massachusetts in that area, Massachusetts and New Hampshire. And so you see this microburst of energy and um, some weird things that were happening. So 
here they say that you know here we are in 2024 april 8th that there is going to be another right eclipse and there is an additional comet that is flying around at the same time as well and they call it the devil comet so i thought that was interesting and i you know definitely you, you should call the great comet people were terrified of it so that's what you know they're they're showing that this comet was a million miles wide during 1811 it was 50 times bigger than the sun, according to what they said. And the solar eclipse that happened then was on the same path as this one that I'm showing you. This one uh, that they're talking about in 1811. So uh, what he said is that the Madrid fault line opened up right after the solar eclipse happened. So um, it's crossing over the United States, making a crisscross. The center of the crisscross says Rapture. They, I have no idea why there's so many towns named Nineveh. I don't recall a whole lot being said about the 2017 pathway where there was another eclipse. But for whatever reason, why the eclipses are crossing over the United States, I have no idea. I don't know, maybe this is common. But I, I just thought it was uh, kind of uh, strange how everything is coming together in that way. Showing that the fault line shifts and then creating um, uh, major earthquakes because of it. On another side note, I had a vision this morning. I, I was looking at this bag and on the inside of the bag was some kind of powder. And I knew it was some kind of ground grasshoppers or locusts. And I said, well, why am I looking at this? And then I saw that, you know, this is being promoted and pushed on the public. The elite have been pushing this. And the locusts essentially have been related to curses. For example, um, you know, during the time of Moses or, you know, plagues in different instances for people that are straying from God, right? So... The elite love to play God. They like to say that they are the almighty of of everyone. And in, in trying to introduce this literal um, symbolic point of uh, presenting a plague to us. And so um, we can also ask to be broken from something that they're trying to impose on us as opposed to uh, the higher powers. We'll say it like that. I know they they believe that they are of the higher powers, but they're not. They never will be. And they keep on trying to impose certain things. But um, I felt like this was a part of it. Like they're wanting us to go through all the levels of the plague. And that's a destruction. Remember, the, the grasshoppers or the um, locusts show up and they eat all the crops. So the issues with food, the attack on our food, the uh, manipulations of our food, and all the other things that help sustain humanity, as well as the sun. The sunlight is vitally important in the tampering with the sun. So I just wanted to insert that part as well. Here are some of the plagues that the Pharaoh had to deal with during the time of Moses. And this was because they wanted to free the Israelites. Water turning to blood. How many locations that we saw the water turning to blood? Um, they used frogs, lice, flies, livestock, pestilence. Or, you know, in our case, trying to get rid of the livestock. Um, boils, which is uh, different kinds of illnesses and viruses and, and diseases. Hail, locusts, as I said, and darkness, that's like the eclipse. I wanted you to notice that just recently we have been talking about some of these issues that people have been discussing regarding what would happen with the eclipse. And some of it is with some kind of zombies. And here we've been talking about the ghouls, which is very similar to zombies. And uh, the war in Nim, which is the uh, weather manipulation or the 
the total freeze. Uh, we mentioned Gnosticism, and also we talked about Jonah, but it was Jonah the movie, and that movie, I'm sure, came out for a purpose to lead into this scenario of the repentance and or the judgment, particularly on the United States, since this is where, you know, this intersection takes place. We talked about the ghouls and zombies again and uh, time anomalies and so forth. So you could see that we've been discussing these things prior to what is happening now. The last thing that I want to talk about is the prediction of the sacrifice of the red heifers. And that was another weird thing for us. We started looking at it. So here we have holy war, red cows, Gaza, and the end of the world. And I guess there are these uh, certain kind of uh, red cows that they're going to sacrifice, which I thought was very interesting um, and made me think about something else. We were researching and looking, and I couldn't help but think about this one location is the cave of Lascaux. And clearly it's a red heifer of some sort. Um, we looked at some footage where we could actually go in and they had like a, um, a view of traveling into that cave. And we found something really interesting about it. that by one of the one of the heifers there was a number 13 and i believe it was a picture like this and someone might say well you know maybe it's not technically like the same thing it looks more like a bull it is that color because it's painted that way but it is quite interesting that it has that appearance and there's horses and deers and some other animals in this cave. It is um, it was created, has over 600 wall paintings. It was discovered uh, in 1940, it looks like. But I don't know how old it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be quite old. So this is Alaska virtual tour. And, you know, you begin to see a lot of the cave art. Um, I guess people are not allowed to go in there and to view any of this because of, uh, I think they said something about carbon monoxide, but also I'm sure that they're worried that something might happen to the artwork and they want to maintain that it is preserved. And there's a number, it was 13. So I started thinking about Roman numeral number. Why would a Roman numeral number be in there? If this artwork was created a long, long time ago. So we were looking at the Roman numerals, Roman numeral 13. And I thought, well, let me just take a look at it. And they show it's a clock face, um, a centurion over here. And then I saw 16, 13, and, or 16 and 13. And that was a padlock that was used in the north gate of the Irish town of Athlone. And then I thought, well, maybe this is leading us to something and maybe this has something to do with, it could be random. It could be absolutely nothing. But does it bring us to um, something that is related to the sacrifice of, of the red heifers? So I had to explore and look around and this is up for speculation, of course. But I did want to bring it in. There's an Ath Athlone. 
castle. His visitor center, there's the lock. 1613, which is shown in Roman nu numerals similar to the cave of Lasco. You say, what does this mean? I always, I think it, it may be leading to a portal of some sort, a connection between France and Ireland. And my first thought is maybe the Romans knew something. Maybe they were connecting something. Or someone was. And I don't know, maybe it has something to do with Atlantis. And maybe that's how long some of these practices have been going on. It was just an idea. It's an interesting place. There are some castles here. This one in particular. See where the lock is. The lock must be famous for something. But is this connected to some of our problems? There's St. Peter's, Peter and Paul's church. Earlier we saw that image of um, that concert where you see there was uh, an image like a, a circular image and then you see it almost looks like a partial spaceship or something's broken off on top or a portal of some sort and upside down androgynous figure uh, just keep in mind that um, Peter was crucified upside down and here is uh, Peter's church. It could completely be symbolic and that it leads to something else. But maybe uh, people can help uh, try to figure out this ongoing war, uh, this never ending problems, this constant uh, sword hanging over humanity's head that uh, doesn't seem to release and the fear that is constantly being leveraged against humanity over something that should just be a natural event. But it's not. They've added other things to it. So let's unlock the key. Let's find out the answers. And let's Ask for divine protection. And those of you that feel like you need to make your peace with the universe, then do so. Just do it. Don't wait for me to tell you or anyone else to tell you. You do what's right for your soul. You feel like people have strayed from your belief system and it doesn't, it violates your belief system, then correct it. Don't allow anyone to intimidate you in any other way. But on the other hand, if you want to expand and look at things and you're not really 100% sure. That's okay as well. I'm not here to be anyone's judge. All I'm saying is I'm here to just provide information and some thought-provoking uh, conversations for people to make their own decisions and to unlock the key within your soul, within your truth, within what is right for you. And regardless of whatever is thrown at us, we can thrive and survive. Or we can, with our intentions, Whatever the motivation is, whatever the intentions of the scientists or the elite or the entities that are infecting the elite to do these terrible things, we can ask that that all be overridden and that we um, can be in that place of peace. I don't believe in being a victim. I don't encourage anyone to be a victim. I encourage people to be in their power and through knowledge and truth and information. We can find that personal power and to stand strong and be prepared. We don't take unnecessary uh, risks. We can be in a place that's safe, secure, and protected always. No reason to be in fear. So stay strong. We'll keep you informed. And by the way, I'll be doing a show with Peter the Insider the day of the eclipse. So. If Peter was planning on doing a show that day, then apparently 
he's not worried about it either. So just to let you know, have a good day, everyone. You have been listening to Androna Talks Radio. Join us on YouTube channel Jessica Errol Morocco and visit her website at www.readingsbyarial.com.